One of the things that made Disney's new DuckTales series stand out is how much it respects its legacy. This isn't just a reboot, it's a series that goes back and pulls from all of the original source material that Disney Duck stories are based on. Time and time again, this show has gone back to the original comics to get new ideas or find a new, fun way to spin a classic story into something modern. And this episode isn't just a great example of that, but also a great episode about how this respect for comics history goes far beyond Disney Duck Comics. This episode of DuckTales pulls from one of Japan's most iconic comic series ever, Astro Boy. And what's most impressive is this episode isn't just a pun and a reference to a popular show, but something that digs a little bit deeper. Let's talk about how DuckTales takes one of Japan's most iconic comic series of all time, integrates that idea to its own story, and evolves its own characters along the way. This is Astro Boy. Back in Season 2 of DuckTales, we met an optimistic youth named Boyd. Introduced as Mark Beak's son, we eventually found out that he was actually an endearing robot boy. In this episode, we find out a lot more about Boyd. But first, s'mores. If we keep s'mores at 1.6 ounces of chocolate per cracker, then we'll have the perfect s'more. Despite being a robot, Boyd has been living a fairly normal life with the family of Doofus Drake. And he's even a junior woodchuck. That's where he befriends Huey Duck and the two bond over their mutual love for doing things exactly as outlined in the Junior Woodchuck Guidebook. That doesn't make us robots. We're just kids. Definitely. That's great, except, well, we just said that one of them is a robot. A robot that it turns out is dealing with some glitches. And it seems that Gyro Gearloose already knows why. <gasps> Where did you get that thing? Manny, get this dangerous machine out of my lab! It turns out that Gyro actually helped create Boyd, although he calls him by a different name. Its name is 2BO. That name is actually really important, but we'll get to that in a minute. Gyro seems exceedingly cautious of Boyd, insisting that he's dangerous. But Gyro says you can stop the glitches and fix 2BO if they get him to his mentor's old lab in Tokyok, Japan. That's right, I said Tokyok. Despite that giving Tokyo a great bird pun, this kicks off one of the most visually exciting episodes of DuckTales yet. At, at least for me. I've been to Japan a few times, and it's a place I really enjoy. And I really appreciate how this episode captures the look and feel of Japanese cities. It's little details, like the way the crosswalks are laid out, the statues in the small parks around the city, and the vending machines, shops, and signage you can see down streets and alleyways. Tokyo definitely feels like a living DuckTales version of the real Japan, but it goes a step beyond that too, baking in lots of references to Japanese pop culture and anime, from signs in the background to characters directly referencing popular series like Sailor Moon or Lupin the Third. Actually, there are a couple of references to Lupin throughout the DuckTales series, but the most direct one here is Inspector Tezuka, a police officer who doesn't trust Gyro Gearloose. She dresses a lot like Lupin III's Inspector Zenagata. Her name is also a reference to Osamu Tezuka, the creator of Astro Boy. That's the reference I actually want to talk about the most. Not Inspector Tezuka herself, but the episode's homage to Omasu Tezuka's Astro Boy series. On the surface, the comparison seems obvious. The story follows Boyd as he discovers he has abilities that would let him become a robot superhero, albeit after dealing with some glitches along the way. That seems pretty straightforward, and it's a fun reference and a great reason to visit the DuckTales version of Tokyo. But that's not what makes this episode such a great homage to Astro Boy. Gyro Gearlooses. That almost sounds a little bit crazy, but for it to make sense, you need to know a little bit more about Astro Boy as a series and how it relates to Boyd. In DuckTales, Boyd is insistent that he's more than a robot. He's a definitely real boy. A definitely real boy. I'm a definitely real boy. But Gyro refuses to see Boy as anything but a dangerous weapon. Throughout the episode, Gyro is constantly dehumanizing Boyd by calling him an it 
And he won't call him by his given name either, referring him only to his serial number, Tubio. As the story progresses, we learn that this is because Gyro programmed Tubio to be like a real boy. But when the young robot was first activated and attacked the city, Gyro felt like a failure. He banished the idea of creating a robot boy, and Tubio was thrown away. If you're familiar with the original Astro Boy's origin story, this might seem a little familiar, if a bit depressing. In the original comic, a scientist named Dr. Tenma created Astro Boy as a replacement for his son, who recently passed away in a car accident. At first, this worked, and Dr. Tenma lived with Astro Boy as his new child, until he realized that his robotic son would never grow up. When it dawned on him that his robot son would never truly be a real boy, Dr. Tenma sold him to the circus, ultimately throwing him away. That's kind of a dark beginning for the Astro Boy series, and this episode of DuckTales borrows heavily from it to create Boyd's origin. Gyro starts out this episode at the end of Dr. Tenma's story, depressed that he had wanted to make a definitely real boy, but failed. To cement the comparison even further, Tenma's son was named Tobio, making Gyro's name for Boyd, Tubio, a strong homage. Fortunately, where Astro Boy's sad origin ends is where Boyd's begins. I'm not an expert on the original Astro Boy story by any means, but from what I've read, the Robot Hero's original creator never reconciles with him. That fortunately doesn't happen in DuckTales. Through the course of the episode, Gyro learns that Tubio's attack on the city wasn't his fault. It was the work of his old mentor, who tried to erase Tubio's original real boy programming and use the robot child for evil. When Gyro learns this, that the malfunction wasn't his fault, he's able to reconcile with Boyd in a way that Dr. Tenma and Astro Boy never did. Not only is this a strong homage to the original Astro Boy story, but I like that it kind of gives it a happier ending, acknowledging the depressing plot of the classic Japanese comic, but giving it closure that the original never had. I think that's incredible. On top of that, this episode also does some heavy lifting to explain Gyro's character and reconcile his modern DuckTales version of the character with the version we see in comic books and the old DuckTales cartoon. Traditionally, Gyro is an exceedingly kind, overly optimistic, and maybe befuddled inventor. But in the modern DuckTales show, he's more reserved, kind of frustrated, and maybe a little bitter. That's pretty different. In flashbacks in this episode, however, we see a version of Gyro that's far more in line with the classic version of his character. Youthful and lighthearted, ready to make inventions for the pure joy of creating something fun and useful. We also see how his perceived failure with Tubio could have changed him into the more bitter person we've seen him in DuckTales so far. I think this episode does a really good job of showing the connection between these versions of his character. It sort of makes him feel more complete in modern DuckTales overall. And would you believe that's still like only half of this episode? I'm not kidding, this story does a lot. From showing us a little bit more about Fenton and Gizmo Duck to even touching a bit more on Huey's development. And that's kind of an important aside. Season one of DuckTales focused a lot on Dewey's larger story. Season two gave us a lot to look at for Louie. So far, season three has given us some moments for Huey, but it's felt a little bit like he hasn't been as developed as his brothers. So among everything else going on with Boyd and Gyro, this episode adds a little bit more to Huey's story and his complexity. Whereas the first episode of season three focused on Huey's obsession and his need to feel like he's the best junior woodchuck, this one showed us his sensitivity as being seen as too robotic and boring. And by making friends with an actual robot boy, learning that it's okay for him to want to do things by the book or have an informative rather than a merely fun day. Boyd, I don't think you're a killer robot. You're just a kid. That's the nicest thing anyone's ever said to me. Somehow, this episode crams all of that in, complete with new locations, a lot of solid jokes, and more anime references than I could possibly keep track of. But it still manages to be a solid story all the way through. This is the kind of story that could have easily had too much thrown into it and fallen flat, but instead it all worked, and I didn't even touch into the action scenes and the excellent animation thrown in that brings this story to the next level. Even without all that, 
It's easily one of my favorite episodes of this season so far. Considering everything this episode crammed in, that's kind of incredible. But that's all I have to say for this episode. We're almost caught up to season three, and we're going to be talking about the new episodes soon, and I can't wait to share that with you all. Until then, thanks for watching, and as always, take it easy, Internet.